What's up guys, Mario here. Apple held its annual iPhone event yesterday and here are all the things you need to know about the brand new iPhone 14 Pro and iPhone 14 Pro Max. Apple unveiled the long-awaited purple color for the iPhone 14 Pro, calling it Deep Purple. From the footage that I have seen, it seems like a similar concept to last year's CR Blue, being kind of in a grayish tone. I think they repeated this process to make it seem more subtle and thus more pro. I personally would have liked a slightly darker version of this color, making it a really deep purple like the name suggests, then again I haven't seen the color in person yet, so it might surprise me when I get it in hand. The 14 Pro is also available in the classic gold and silver finishes, but this year they decided to drop the graphite color. Instead they're replacing it with a brand new space black, which is by far my favorite color of this whole lineup. I have been waiting for such a long time to finally have a phone in matte black and this is just a perfect finish. I will be for sure choosing this color when picking my own phone. The whole lineup is keeping ceramic shield on both both the front and back glass. Apple is keeping the screen sizes of the Pro phones the same this year, with the 14 Pro having a 6.1 inch display and the 14 Pro Max having a 6.7 inch display. They are also slimming down the bezels around the whole display. I appreciate it, but I think you couldn't tell the difference. The design change everyone will notice though is the removal of the notch. Apple has replaced it with this new pill-shaped cutout, which houses the Face ID sensor as well as the upgraded front-facing camera. It would have been quite a small change if Apple didn't do anything else with it, but fortunately they used some of their Apple magic to spice it up a bit. They are calling it the Dynamic Island. This is by far the coolest thing I have seen a phone manufacturer do in quite a long time. It looks so cool and the animations were just so smooth. It changes the pill into some sort of multitasking center for all your alerts and notifications. It will adapt to whatever you have going on in a very slick way. And if you want to expand the information it's showing or you want to go into the corresponding app, then you just need to tap dynamic island and it will do its thing. I think Apple made a great choice here to take something other companies were trying to get rid of or hide and reinvent it into something special that customers will want on their phones. They have also implemented a way for developers to integrate this functionality into their apps. I'm stoked to see this interacting with some of my favorite apps like Spotify or Twitter. The display itself has also been updated with new LTPO technology which enables Apple to turn down the refresh rate to 1 hertz. That means your display will update only once every second. This also enables Apple to add the new always on display, which turns down the brightness of the whole panel, darkens the colors of your wallpaper and turns down the refresh rate. So you can see the time as well as your widgets even when you're not using your device. You will be able to also see that gorgeous lock screen that you put together with the new iOS 16 update, customizing every detail to your liking. The 14 Pros also get a massive upgrade in their display brightness giving them a maximum HDR brightness of 1600 nits, which matches the levels of the $5,000 Pro Display XDR, as well as giving them a peak outdoor brightness of 2000 nits, which is a new level for the whole smartphone market. To optimize the battery life and performance of both devices, the Pros are getting the new 4 nanometer A16 Bionic chip. Apple claims it should be the fastest chip ever in a smartphone, 40% more performance than the competition. I truly believe this claim, since Apple has been smacking the rest of the market for a few years now. The A16 should be slightly better than last year's A15, while being 20% less power hungry, utilizing those efficiency cores. Apple didn't say much about battery life on stage, apart from quoting all day battery life. But on their side, the lineup is quoted to get one hour extra over last year's models. When thinking of the incredible battery life of last year's models, this is really nothing to be upset about. Now we come to the biggest change to the iPhone in years. Apple is upgrading the main white camera to 48 megapixels with a quad pixel sensor. This sensor is 65% larger than the one on last year's 13 Pros. You will be able to use the full 48 megapixel images when using the new Pro RAW mode. This is going to be very useful for photographers who want to edit the photo exactly how they want. But if the lighting conditions aren't perfect or you're just taking a picture of something, four pixels will combine into one using a technique called pixel binding to create a 12 megapixel final photo, which will take up less space and still look great. This will also drastically help with low light performance, especially when combining it with Apple's new photonic engine, which they claim is going to make two times better low light photos. I can't really imagine what a two times better low light image looks like, so we will have to wait for comparisons when I get my hands on the phone. Apple has also added a new telephoto option, two times zoom. They are cropping into the middle 12 megapixels 
of the 48 megapixel main sensor to give you a crispy optically zoom shot. This is a really smart move since you won't be sacrificing any quality while still getting that better reach. The 14 Pros also have a new ultra wide camera with a larger sensor and other improvements which give it a 3 times improvement in low light. It's even sharper to capture more detail, especially when shooting macro photos. They have also redesigned the flash to be more intelligent. It now knows the focal length that you're using to shoot your pictures and it turns up the brightness to the appropriate amount for optimal subject lighting. Apple also finally upgraded the front facing camera to feature autofocus. This will drastically improve the quality of the photos and videos coming from the front. And let's not forget about the new action mode they added. I was astonished when I saw the difference it makes. It looks like you're using the phone on a gimbal. It has a bit of a downside where the phone reduces the max resolution from 4k down to 2.8k but then again you probably won't mind this if it does the job like Apple has shown. Also cinematic mode gets a great update going up to 4k 24 fps and 4k 30 fps. I'm hyped to see this change since last year's one in 1080p was quite the niche feature to be honest. The whole 14 lineup gets the new emergency SOS via satellite feature. You can establish an emergency contact when pointing the phone at a satellite in the sky. Apple provides you with a well-designed app that is going to help you to get the positioning right. This will establish a weak connection between you and emergency services, but it still will be strong enough to text for help. They have also provided a form with the most common answers to speed up the whole process. Unfortunately, as of today, the feature is only available in the US and Canada, but I assume it will be coming out to other countries shortly. You will be getting the service for the first two years for free. After that, Apple is going to be implementing some sort of a subscription service for the ones who need it. As it goes for car crash detection, Apple uses new sensors that are also present in the Apple Watch to figure out if you had an accident and will quickly call your emergency contacts if you don't cancel it yourself. Apple is also going away from the traditional SIM tray, going all in on eSIM, which makes complete sense since that's just another piece of unnecessary plastic that we put into our phones. But this move to eSIM only will only occur in North America this year, with other countries probably joining next year. The biggest surprise of the whole event was that they didn't increase any prices, which I was really surprised by because I thought that the phones were just getting so many features that they for sure will increase the prices. But that didn't happen and the iPhone 14 Pro still starts at $999 and the 14 Pro Max starts at $1099. Both kick off with 128 gigs of storage and go all the way up to 1 terabyte. So that's all you need to know about the iPhone 14 Pros. Be sure to subscribe and watch out for a new video coming about the iPhone 14 and iPhone 14 Plus. I will be also making a video about the new Apple Watches as well as the AirPods Pro 2. So have a nice rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one.